Hi, I'm Dave Kassler, KE0OG, here with some tips for those new to the HF bands. You may have been a technician for a while and are used to how VHF FM works. HF is different from VHF FM in several ways. So here's a little background. First, let's listen to an upper sideband signal on 20 meters just to see what it sounds like. Coming in here to S9, it was at 5x9, and that's a pretty good signal for a mobile. Go ahead. Uh, good to hear. Running a TACOM 706 with an AH-14er and a 9-foot CD whip. Let's listen to that again while I point out some features. First, you're looking at the screen of a software-defined radio, and over 40 kilohertz of signal is spread out before you. The part that is tuned in is shown in the middle as the A receiver. The waterfall shows a record of the signal as it comes in. The wiggly line in the middle is a real-time spectrum. One of the first things to note is that there is noise on the signal. Some signals are stronger than others. Only the strongest signals come to your ear without any noise. The HF bands are noisy and, unlike FM, single sideband is not designed to reduce noise. It's like being at a noisy party and trying to pick out the voice of the person you're talking to. Your ability to do this grows with practice. Additionally, the HF bands are not channelized, meaning signals can appear most anywhere within the SSB band, sometimes overlapping or right on top of each other. On the ham bands, side bands come in two flavors, upper and lower. Looking at this frequency diagram, we see that an AM station transmits a carrier plus two side bands. Each side band contains the same information, but the lower side band is inverted from the upper side band. The purpose of the carrier is to give a reference tone used to demodulate the signal. An ordinary AM radio can receive these signals successfully. Now, it's possible to filter out one of the sidebands and just transmit the carrier and the remaining sideband, and an AM radio would successfully demodulate this. But an awful lot of power goes into that carrier, so if we drop the carrier, we can put all the power into the remaining sideband. But this creates a problem. An ordinary AM radio can't demodulate this successfully because there's no reference carrier. So, for an SSB receiver, we must reinsert the missing reference carrier. Look what happens in the case of upper sideband. If we reinsert the carrier at too low a frequency, all the audio frequencies will be too high because the radio interprets them as the difference between the reinserted carrier and the received signal. And if we reinsert the carrier too high, all the audio frequencies will sound too low. Let's listen. In this case, I've zoomed in on the SDR radio window. Note that the carrier reinsertion point is the dotted red line to the left of the A receiver. As I move that up and down the spectrum, looking at that dotted line, not at the cursor, you can hear the difference. Yeah, it has been kind of quiet today now that you mentioned it. Uh, but it uh, looks like this is the first time you've checked in with us, according to our log. Uh, we'd like to ask you if you were a military veteran, and if so, what branch of service were you with? What does this sound like on an ordinary receiver? You're looking at my 10 Tech Jupiter as I tune across the band looking for signals. Note that if I find a signal that sounds too high, I gently tune so that the audio frequencies go down, and vice versa. With some practice, you can zero in on the signal so that it sounds very good. This is probably the most important point of this video. Tune slowly. Lima. Uh, Lima. Thanks, 5-9 Oregon. Your fire is in in North Dakota. Let's go to thanks, QRZ. November 7th, India, Whiskey Bravo. QRZ, Whiskey 1, Alpha, Whiskey Stroke 7. 
Regarding filter bandwidth, some radios have only one setting for SSB, like the Sol Yesu. Other radios, such as my Tentec, have a multitude of filters. I usually use 2850 Hz for SSB, and in some circumstances you can do with less. Opening your filter beyond this will not help with intelligibility and may, in fact, increase the noise. Let's look at some common radio controls by taking a tour of my Tentec. Your radio will have similar, if not identical, controls. Higher end radios have even more controls, but remember that each additional control you pay for has diminishing returns as far as usefulness. The first control is RF gain. Usually this is set wide open. Only in the case of very strong signals is this control reduced to less than full amplitude. Please note that on some radios, if you turn up RF gain too much, it acts somewhat like a squelch. Next comes the audio gain, which you set for a comfortable listening volume. This goes hand in hand with the automatic gain control, or AGC, sometimes called AVC for automatic volume control. On my radio, I can set for fast, medium, and slow. Set for your preference. I prefer medium or slow for SSB. Now, let's talk about the main tuning knob. Many radios allow you to set the step rate, meaning how precisely the knob tunes. If you have it set for one kilohertz per step, you may find yourself tuning right across the signal and not even noticing it's there. I find that the step size of 100 hertz per step is about right for tuning SSB. That means that every notch of the tuning knob tunes the signal by 100 hertz. You may find yourself playing with the step control to get it where you want it to be. Now let's look at the RIT control, or Receiver Incremental Tuning. As you know, tuning your main knob changes both the transmit and the receive frequency simultaneously. But if the other station drifts a bit, you may want to just tune your receiver a little to one side. You do this using the RIT or RIT control to tweak the frequency of the received audio just where you want it. Be sure to set RIT to zero before moving up or down the band to tune in other stations. Lastly, let's talk about bandwidth. Let me demonstrate. 3000 Hz or 2850 Hz is about right for SSB. Tuning lower means you lose the high frequencies. Tuning higher means you're capturing noise that's not relevant to the signal. You can tweak this sometimes if there's interference. By cutting the bandwidth, you can remove the interference. Passband tuning, or PBT, is available on most radios these days, and it's another interference reduction device. If you're getting interference on either the high or low ends of the audio spectrum, you can tweak this knob in the hopes of removing the interference. Of course, this comes at some expense in terms of intelligibility for the signal you want to hear. Where can you find SSB signals? We look at the frequency allocation chart. You'll find most of the SSB signals in the general bands, with most on 80, 40, 20, and during the daytime on 10 meters. For 80 meters, look between 3800 and 4000 kilohertz. For 40, look between 7175 and 7300 kilohertz. For 20, look from 14.225 to 14.350 megahertz, with most between 14.225 and 14.3 megahertz. For 10 meters, you'll find SSB activity between 28.3 and 28.5 megahertz. Obviously, there's activity elsewhere, but those are good places to start. So there you have it. Some hints to get started. If you have questions on this topic or suggestions for other help topics, please reply to this video on YouTube or reply on my website at ke0og.net slash helps. I see the comments in either case. 
Until next time, this is Dave, KE0OG, wishing you the best with your HF Hamming.